welcome back to LinkedIn Logs, episode uh, 16. Episode 16 of LinkedIn Logs. I'm your host, Chad White. If you didn't know, this is the premier business podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. We're going to fade out the song right now. Okay. <laughs> just had to <laughs> I forgot how to do this I've been gone for two weeks and by gone I mean I just haven't done this show in two weeks why because I feel nothing okay big stuff happened big stuff has happened in the past couple of days weeks yeah yeah weeks I guess I don't know there's a lot going on in terms of the uh, writer strike sag just approved for uh, their actors for that guild to go on strike and um yeah and and uh but the biggest thing and so and so hopefully that'll 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 bolster some type of uh not credibility but just a way for upper leverage for the WGA because the DGA the directors guild did a WGA stands for Writers Guild of America the the DGA is SAG stands for Screen Actors Guild the DJ which is directors guild <laughs> They uh they they j- they signed an agreement uh, that in no way affects the Writers Guild. Does it help a little bit? Teeny tiny bit. But it doesn't really aid in the larger causes that that the WJ is uh, striving for, and that includes good old down home being paid for streaming. Now this all comes to a head, especially after Disney. Uh, just like Warner Brothers, which we'll get to in a second, which I'm, which I'm really heading towards, they they decided to write off, I think, $1.05 billion in content uh, revenue for um, uh, Disney+, Plus, which means they'll be removing TV shows and movies. And uh, some writers are not happy. Not writers. Some, yeah, writers, because it, it, the article I'm referring to. Well, I'll get to this. If you listen to the other show, The Constitutionals Podcast, uh, which is the premier podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Then uh, that'll be coming out again on Fridays, on Friday. And uh, and then also the other podcasts, like, because the writer's strike is still happening. Late Night Lately, the Late Late Night Show show is still on hiatus. Right now, let's get to what happened this morning. Chris Litch. Who was brought aboard aboard uh, the Warner Brothers Discovery train by David Zasloff during his uh, uh, transition from Discovery boss to Warner Bros. Discovery lo- boss is officially out as CNN CEO. You also have to. Uh, uh, I'm I'm dealing with a cold, so bear with me. There'll be a lot of muting on the mic today. Chris Litch is out a week after an article, an Atlantic piece that was that painted him as not the the news juggernaut that he thinks he is. The insane man who doesn't know how to um, run a network, more or less. If you see me, my eyes darting around the screen, it is because I'm trying to find a way. I have this big curved gaming monitor it's 32 inches and it's curved and it goes about as wide as my arms right here and while it fits the internet on one side the obs screen capture on another side and then uh or camera face whatever that is and then audition down here in the corner there's no room left for my my notes from Notion, which is how I track things on this stupid podcast. Now, I do have plans if I get a bigger desk, which I have no way of getting a bigger desk anytime soon. Uh, Also, one can't fit in this corner that I'm in. But I still have my old monitor, which is right there behind me. And I would love to have that off to the side somewhere so I can have these notes and I don't have to, or I can have the monitor and I don't have to keep looking over at myself. Anyway, the monitor, I mean, with the cameras. Okay, anyway, stop. (laughs) Continue on. Let's break down what happened in the past couple of months, really. When I pop open every single article I have. And I don't want to spend too much time on this, because this really is 
a, uh, a, a constitutionals thing, and um, I'm still trying to get a job at Warner Brothers. <laughs> But I think it's also important to hold people accountable and hold their feet to the fire. And I will tell you this. I do like Chris Licht, 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 Licht. In terms of the small amount of work, I have to, I have to do some, I have to do some finagling. Um, uh, <laughs> this is... I have to I have to open up the Atlantic article in a different way. I'm not stealing. <laughs> okay. Now I do like the work that he did, first starting with Stephen Colbert's Late Show. I I do appreciate what he did. He was able to write that ship, where that first year. Colbert was the showrunner and he was the host and he was a writer for that show. And it really seemed that, well, it, what didn't, it didn't seem he was running on like, like people say burning both ends of the candle. Colbert was just burning down the house and that show wasn't really working. And even though there are lots of it, lots, lots of parts that really stayed tried and true to the message he was trying to get across there were things in Stephen Colbert's late show in that initial run that just didn't work. And then Chris was brought in and he was able to help that show get to where it is today. Truly, I think without Chris, that show, you know, when uh, 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 Corden left, I think that show would have been out too. Or even maybe beforehand. And then they would have acquiesced to Corden jumping in. Uh, or or uh, to, to Corden leaving his show too and then you know, maybe a year earlier or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a genie. Oh, God, if I was a genie. And then Chris moved on to CBS Mornings. I th- Wait, which am I doing it in the right direction? Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he, yes, yes. Okay, so then Chris moved on to CBS Mornings uh, with Gail King and uh, Anthony Mason and uh, Tony DeCopel. And he was able to change that show into a more of a morning show. Whereas I think, and I only started watching CBS mornings after Charlie Rose left. Uh, God, I hated him. <laughs> he did. I mean, he did assault people. <laughs> I only started watching after he left. Um, but he was able to turn that show from basically CBS news in the morning to what it is now CBS mornings. And then he moved on to the CNN, which is the biggest leap. It, it makes sense for him to have been in the CBS fold and to have have gone from let me work on this show to basically to doing the stalwart stalwart uh, uh, for the for the show for the network, the morning show, which is a big enough show in its own right. I don't know how it does ratings wise, but I can only imagine it's in third place. Behind Good Morning America and a number one Today Show. There's a reason why the Today Show... I watch all these shows every morning, so I get to say this. There's a reason why Today Show is number one. Uh, and I think CBS should be number two. But it's because... Not the stories. and uh, It's the coverage and the people. And I feel like the people on the Today Show... I feel like everybody... Hoda, Samantha, the rest. Kristen. Which I... I, I mean, she's moving over to uh, meet the press. Uh, but Kristen and... The, yeah, I mean, I just feel like everybody knows everybody, and they talk to everybody outside of the show. Uh, CBS Mornings, I say they're second place in terms of that because uh, there are things that hearing Gail talk about sports is just, it's just like a, like, miss. It's, you know, asking questions to Tony and uh, and now Nate Burleson. Uh, and then uh, Good Morning America, I will, I, am, I will be surprised if Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and the, the rotating characters over there even talk to each other, period even during commercial breaks. I will be surprised. Now, let's get back to Chris. There was an, uh, a, a feature from Tim Alberta, written for The Atlantic, that I urge you to go read. It was... It's, in a, it's a very fascinating piece that uh, it titled Inside the Meltdown at CNN, and... The way that Chris is portrayed, that Lich is portrayed, and I feel like I'm mispronouncing his name, but I also genuinely 
don't give a flying crap. Again, I like Chris. I just think he was a bad leader for uh, CNN. Okay. Now, uh, I'm trying to find... Oh, gee, Merry Christmas. Hold on. I got it. Don't worry. I'm going to find it. I'll find it. All right. Here we go. Okay. I found it. Now, go now go look at it. And it's... Uh, uh, there's, there's interviews with... You know, uh, not interviews, but there's... Uh, Quotes from people there. You 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 see Chris in this in this light that really paints him as somebody whose 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 management style was frenetic and really missing the mark on all 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 spots and everything. Um, and uh, I you know and Chris and again this is again for for the constitutionals more more than it is for LinkedIn logs, but uh, it is it it just it just shows that he's not a leader. For for a for a, a, a company as large as CNN to to have that kind of and and while that seemed like it should have been the next plausible step, he shouldn't be running a network as big as CNN and as uh, important. You can run a show as small as CBS Mornings because it is it is it is fighting against Today Show. It is fighting against Squawk Box. It's fighting against Good Morning America. Uh, and whatever CNN had on at 5 a.m. beforehand, 5 a.m. to 8 a.m., 9 a.m. beforehand. What time does what time does CNN this morning start? I don't know. And then, after that article painted him in a horrible light, the CNN had its um, the what year is it? Thirtieth anniversary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, excuse me, fortieth anniversary, right? Now, what's 1980 minus 2023? <laughs> 2023 minus 1980. Uh, I typed 2023. Guys, I don't know how to do math anymore. <laughs> I deleted the wrong number. Oh my gosh, Chad. Jesus, it's 43 years old. After it had its 43th birthday. And, uh, and and here in Atlanta, the CNN Center has been sold off because they don't need it anymore. Well, they say they don't need it anymore. Uh, and also no show has been produced there since, I think, the early 2000s. There was a – there CNN people, past and present, had a uh, uh, – oh, God, what is it called? An anniversary party of sorts at the front of CNN. And uh, I wasn't invited because the only the closest I got to working at CNN was working at uh, the Starbucks that's in that same building. Very true. <clears throat> and people definitely there were definitely mixed messages about the new leadership, not including not 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 including <laughs> uh, Chris Lish as well as David Zaslov. And I've been a very big proponent of uh, talking about this David guy. I do not like him at all. It's like when Mike McCarthy was hired by the Dallas Cowboys. He was, uh, and I'm a Cowboys fan, he, he had, he'd just done a very poor job with the Green Bay Packers, and, and, and yet the, uh, the devil with the, 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 cash, the cash book, cash check, Jerry Jones thinks it's all right to just go ahead and bring in a not good coach. Now, I will say this. They did get to uh, the playoffs, but they get to the playoffs mostly every single year. Anyway, this next one comes from Alex Weprin. And you know what? I should just bring up the window capture because I will give you a look at this. Okay. So here's how – this is what the uh, that other one looked like, the Atlantic one. Check that out. And then this is what the, the Hollywood Reporter – this comes from Alex Weprin. CNN chief tells staff I should not be in the news after meltdown at the magazine, meltdown magazine profile. Now, th- this is, again, this is in response to the, uh, um, what's it called, to the Atlantic piece. Chris wrote a memo to CNN staffers. And as you can see, this is this week. This is two days ago. This is Monday, June 5th, 2023. Uh, he put out his, uh, a memo to staffers talking about the divisions that everybody has. Uh, it was an editorial call is what they had, rather. Uh, telling them he will, quote, fight like hell to win back their trust and that they, quote, deserve a leader who will be in the trenches fighting for them. Uh, I mean, at this point, it just kind of seems it it, it it appears to to me that they that Chris rather um, is in over his head. 
he's running a company that he should not have gotten in the first place, and he's trying to make CNN more mobile than what it is. And and by that I mean they they went from uh, 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 doing essentially a little bit more a left of center news, and which I which doesn't I mean it. In the end, they they are supposed to be CNN is supposed to be the um, uh, the 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 centrist, the one that covers everything fairly. They were covering everything fairly. There just happened to be more crap coming out from the right side. But when you have a a big Republican person that's in charge of the company, I'm not saying David Zaslav is, but look at him. I mean, come on. I looked at Bob Chapek. And before there was news that he had donated a bunch of money to uh, to uh, Republican uh, CPACs and all that stuff. And CNN, like MSNBC and even like Fox News and, and I mean, just like just like just let's, let's just go back to the basic of a, uh, the basics of a cable channel or a broadcast channel. They're not as mobile as what an HBO can do. So let's look at CNN. Let's look at HBO. CNN, for better or worse, is a 24-hour news channel that has to deal with breaking news like that instantly. Things that that can only be done on that type of network. Whereas for HBO, you know, they they they're airing an episode of Succession, and that's that's all they have. And if they can't air an episode of Succession, then they have to air an episode of Sex in the City, and that was great. Or what was it called? And just like that, <laughs> and that was great. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> just like a very sarcastic, sarcastic uh, uh, Carrie and, and the rest of those. Go- that was great. <laughs> Mr. Big, more like Mr. Medium. <laughs> okay. We have fun here. But C- but but CNN is a lot more. Uh, it has it has to be more structured. I know it made I know I made it sound like there's breaking news and everything, but CNN can only do so much. Whereas HBO can you know they, they can move on to the next thing and not really look back. So there's a lot of 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 hard stuff, of hard realities coming true for CNN at this point. Now they're without a leader. I believe there's a, a a woman has taken the reins. Look at them finally choosing somebody who's not a white guy. Yeah, I say it, Zaslav. <laughs> there were text chains. There were uh, the emails. There were slacks. Alberta, Tim Alberta, the guy who wrote the, the article for The Atlantic, followed Litch for a very long time, for months, looks like Mr. Weprin wrote here. There were comments from uh, uh, the, uh, the COO. There, there was a response from Warner as a whole. Litch still appeared to have some level of support from David Zaslav because they're buddies. Alberta was offered a statement from Zaslav, but the Atlantic initially did not run it. A spokesperson for the publication said the statement came in the night before the story was released and that, quote, because of an oversight, it was not included or referred to in the story as originally published. It has uh, since been added, obviously, and things of that nature. Now, uh, I w- there's another thing I want to get to. Wow, they use the same photo for two different things. John Coblin and Benjamin Mullen over at the New York Times just yesterday released another profile of Chris Litch. Chris Litch is uh, of CNN faces a crisis. Here's why. Not a profile, but the things that he had to deal with before he was getting fired. He's been there for 13 months. There were there were programming issues and ratings have just gone down. Look at the Donald Trump town hall and now more recently the Nikki Haley one which was uh, of a further step down uh, and um, the uh, now we have the upcoming I believe Chris Christie's going to get one and I believe uh, Mike Pence is going to get one but this 9 p.m. hour has been a real thorn in their side I was going to say thorn in their heel but that doesn't make sense 
They tried a lot of things, and now they're going to put Caitlin Collins there for some reason. Not that I'm jealous or anything, because we are the same age. <laughs> but they should put it. I mean, if 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 this 9 p.m. hour is so important, they should put it for put it down for somebody who can handle it and who's who's uh, been there for a minute. They also have issues with the morning show and Don Lemon. CNN has been losing money left and right. And people are speaking their minds. Staff revolt is what it says. Uh, they wrote, it's a crisis of confidence. I really like that. Among his staff members. I really like that. That's a, That could have been the title of the thing. Chris Litch is dealing with this crisis of confidence. Over at CNN. Now we're going to get into what Jeff Zucker said. This past weekend... In the midst of all of this, Jeff Zucker, who used to be the CEO of CNN, who was let go because of a a relationship with Allison Glossner, I believe that's what her name is. I I know how to do this, but I don't know how to do math. Allison Golist. And it was AG. This comes from New York Times written by Benjamin Mullen. Could Jeff Zucker fix CNN? He seems to think so. Now he was he was let go because he had a, a relationship with his subordinate who was Allison Golist, who was a producer, I believe, for that network. He spoke to uh, a classroom at Yale University in April with Allison by his or who was in attendance rather. In front of the students, where other high-profile media executives, including Bob Iger of Disney, were scheduled to speak the same day, Mr. Zucker compared his failure to disclose his relationship with Ms. Golis, CNN's former communications chief, that's what she was, uh, to handing over a dangerous weapon. He, ba- he said, I gave them a gun, they shot me with it. Okay, makes sense, whatever. Also, he's 58. <laughs> a lot of these people, when you see other ages, you're like, <laughs> Ooh, boy. all that money, you guys didn't do anything with it. <laughs> He's been over the over these past few days. He's been talking more and more, and I don't know when this. Uh, let's see the seminar yeah, I know, in April. I don't know why this is coming out just now. Anyway, um, he's been he's been a lot more forthcoming about his feelings for the past uh, for this what's been happening. His criticism may be painful for executives running CNN to hear second and third hand, but also painful are the numbers. The news division, which regularly made more than billion. We've, we've seen the numbers go down. One billion, they're down to uh, 750 just last year uh, because they because Warner Bros. Discovery wrote off $200 million in losses from CNN Plus, which should have never happened in the first place. Fox Nation could sustain because they have a bunch of racists who want to support that streaming service. That's just I that is just the nature of it. Fox Nation lives because people are uh racist and they want to be able to watch that stuff. CNN Plus was dead in the water, just like Quibi. So I mean obviously that might be the smartest thing that Chris has done is is get rid of CNN Plus. I ne- I didn't like it from the get-go. It should have been something that was included, not live streaming shows. That should that should not that should not be a thing just yet. Because look at ESPN, that is ju- they're just now, Disney just now getting into uh, wanting to spin off ESPN into its own app. Not ESPN Plus, but ESPN proper. So Zucker's been out doing his thing. He started a new venture called Redbird IMI with a billion dollars to spend on acquisitions in the digital media, sports, entertainment, and news industries. Hey, uh, listen, Zucks, my guy. I'm here for you, man. C plus comedy will be 10 in a month and change. You know? Hit me up. This article on Mr. Zucker is based on interviews with more than four dozen of his associates in the media industry who spoke with him on the conditioning of blah blah blah. Who spoke on the condition of uh, you know, anonymity and all that stuff. So to them, he's being very outspoken about what is wrong. We've got that with CNN. Uh, Zucker's criticism has rankled executives at Warner Bros. Discovery, which owns CNN, according to people familiar with their thinking. They suspect Mr. Zucker has leaked unflattering information about the network's operations to the press. 
I don't know. That seems like an unclassy move on his part. Uh, I don't think that is true. I, I think that's just them trying to posit, you know, reasons why things are getting out. He's been candid about the missteps of uh, what AT and T did when they owned uh, Warner Warner Media at the time, as well as Jason Keelar, who's who's a guy I liked. I liked his decisions to bring. He was the one who said, "Hey, let's put a let's put a, a um, Wonder Woman and, and such on on uh, HBO Max." And you know what? That saved HBO Max, and quite frankly. I think it saved uh, streaming a little bit. That's Disney Plus was able to do it. Peacock was able to do it. Come on. Disney moved shows when Disney Plus launched over to, to streaming. Shows, not, not just shows, movies as well. If someone was going to do it, well, let's just say this. Warner has been a pioneer in streaming twice. <laughs> One for, for premiering things during a pandemic on its streaming platform. And two for a bad thing, which is writing off debt. That it didn't need to write off. So Zucker's not happy about the direction of CNN. And again, I'll get into this on the Constitutionals because this is a business podcast. But now Chris is out. Written by John Cobble and Benjamin Mullen. Chris Lish is out at CNN after ending a brief and chaotic run. He's been there for 13 months. People, there, there have been layoffs. There's been restructuring. And you know what? I also think... I'll, I'll give him this. Uh, CNN last Tuesday, I think, at, of all days last Tuesday, uh, uh, rebranded itself. And now they have a more sleek look. It looks a lot more modern. Uh, it's what they needed. The breaking news Chiron is gone. It doesn't run all the time. And, uh, I mean, yeah, that, that makes sense. Because I don't want to just be the guy that's crapping on them all the time. Now, this is from Brian Steinberg at Variety. David Zaslav likes to gut cable uh, networks. CNN isn't easily remodeled. Uh, I don't know if I want to talk about this here or on um, uh, the constitutionals. But what it's getting at is we got the presidential elections coming up. We've got CNN losing money. Uh, Chris Litch, who is now out, was running CNN in such a way that it just didn't make sense it was like a kid hyped up on candy again read this read this atlantic article because it is uh insane how how uh, unappeased this guy was with things you shouldn't you shouldn't be moving things around so much just like this 9 p.m hour it really this it's unfortunate or the rotating guest slot the host slot at a cnn this morning Just saying, uh, but what they were doing here really didn't make sense in terms of it. And and Zaslav thinks it's easy to to make things run light. That and that's including letting people go, you know, from their jobs, like me. And I will never work there again, apparently, because I'm just sitting here talking straight up crap about these people. Uh, but I mean. It, I mean, it it it, see, it doesn't make sense the way that they were they are running this company. You can't take things away and then expect things to, uh, you know, you can't take away, uh, uh, uh you know, seven thousand, eight thousand people and expect things to run just as smoothly, if not better. Cartoon Network's not going to be a better network because six hundred people lost their jobs. Because, I mean, if anything, it's going to make you have to air more episodes of Teen Titans Go. Or for CNN, it's going to make you have to uh, have seven seven correspondents on a three-hour program. And you, and then what do you turn into? You turn into ESPN. You turn into Get Up. That's why I stopped watching ESPN, because it's all loud and hokey. What they're doing... With CNN and with Warner Brothers as a whole, I will I refuse to say Discovery. They're tarnishing the brand, and it's just not something that uh, re- that like it, they're just not enca- they're in- they're not encapsulating what Warner was before. I saw uh, I saw a, um, 
a, a headline. I believe it was on the New York Times. It doesn't really matter where it was, but uh, or Variety or something like that. But it was Ted Turner's biographer. Is like is always talking to Ted Turner, obviously because he's a biographer. But he said, uh, "It like it, Ted Turner's not happy with what's going on with his uh, with his legacy over there at Warner Bros. Discovery, and he shouldn't be because now CNN, HBO, Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, the rest of the Warner brand, Looney Tunes, all that stuff is being scooped in with Doctor Pimple Popper." And little people, big world, and and things of that nature that don't really matter in the end, and th- and things that can be, you know, there's 53 seasons of Chopped, and I like Chopped, but come on, there's there's uh, I, I think like seven or eight 90 Day Fiance spinoffs outside of the regular 90 Day Fiance. I mean, it just seems like things are expendable, and looking at the and looking at Max. Now, what which what HBO Max turned into, getting rid of the HBO brand name and and turning uh, uh it, it, turning it into this sanitized thing, really shows that you don't understand what you got yourself into. Warner is not Discovery. And then to come out in the past week and uh, two weeks and say David Zaslav and say, uh, uh I think there's going to be more bundling in the future. Like no, dude. Nobody's gonna want to work with you if you if you keep running a company like this. Okay, what else is going on? <laughs> I uh, I didn't want to get too far into that because I wanted to talk about again about this on um, the constitutionals. This episode was supposed to be about my workouts, but I just also wanted to talk smack about Saslov and Lich and. And what's happening in that world. Uh, so maybe next week's episode will be about me working out. Because believe it or not, I get up at 4 a.m. I go work out. I come home, 7, 7.30. And I get along with my day. Uh, actually, part of that's lying. I I will come home at like 7. And then I will do some cardio stuff. So I finish around 8 depending on the day it's not every day i finish around eight it it makes me it makes me feel this this whole situation not the gym stuff (laughs) the the cnn thing it they clearly don't understand the power they have because if if disney if this has happened with chapek if chapek had had done this with abc news and espn and, and disney and disney plus they would have gotten rid of him sooner Warner is in a position, unfortunately, where they were bought out by a company. And while they do have more um, uh, uh, name power, star power, they don't have the precedence over Discovery. And Discovery will take t- will take the lead on things. Because wasn't it last year when they said, when Zaslav said, hey, we're going we're gonna to blend in HBO Max and Discovery Plus – wasn't it? Wasn't it he who said him who the Zaslav who said uh, it's probably going to live on the Discovery Plus platform because that's the one or that people like or not people like uh, that's the one. I think that's what he, along those lines because they want it because because I, I don't know they said the player is better at Discovery Plus which I don't think is true. Anyway, but now I mean we had to re-download it. we had to download an app so it's just it's just hard to see. And I get, I understand, I do want to say this, I understand that CNN had to go back to, they, they had to, Scott Galloway on, um, uh, 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 he, and, he and Kara Swisher have a podcast called uh, Pivot. And he said when, when, a couple of weeks ago, a couple of episodes ago, that CNN is supposed to be the news network for the centrist, for, for all of America, for everybody on the left and right, which is true which I, I don't have an issue with them moving from left of center to center. However, there there is a point where you are taking back, excuse me, you're reducing the news down to nothing. And then, and then at, and at that point, 
you're going to be like people are now going to see that, hey, when you do do a story in one direction, that's where we're seeing it go. That's where that's where that story is like truly pointing. And and so when you when you have these town halls with Trump and Haley and Pence and Christie and probably um, uh, uh, everybody, Tim Scott and the, and the rest of the people who are running, who are the who are running for the GOP slot uh, for 2024. It, it seems as though you're giving them more leeway than you are giving uh, uh, the uh, and again, I candidates on the left have not announced, but I'm saying, but it just appears as though you're giving them, you're giving those people the the shafts when it when it's compared to the people on the right, and it's and it seems unfair and an overcorrection that was unnecessary. Who is that for, really? Especially when Chris, uh, if you look at this uh, this Atlantic article, I'll bring it up for a hot second. If you look at this Atlantic article piece again, uh, he he says that he knew that he they planted all those those Trump people uh, inside of uh, during the Trump uh, nine p.m. Uh, town hall. He knew that the audience was going to be all Trump people, and that uh, and that they. I mean, I'm I'm butchering what he was saying, but you know that they were happy that he was excited about that, and happy for it, and. And in the end, it didn't really help out because they clapped for everything that guy said. So in order to change, and again, this is supposed to be a business podcast. <laughs> it is. It is a business. It's supposed to be a job podcast, a business podcast. That's kind of what it is. But in the end, they're going to have to, if they want, like truly, let news be boring. Don't let it be this dynamic thing that ha- that seems like it has to change at all times. Look at PBS NewsHour. I watch it five days a week at 6 p.m. Five days a week. And it comes on seven days a week. <laughs> but I watch, I watch it five days a week. And if uh, Friday, if, if I'm watching it, then I know I'm not going out. <laughs> but that is one of that – is, that, is that is a news show that works because it is fair and it's honest and it's not flashy. I mean, just last week, I they 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 had teleprompters. Prom, excuse me, teleprompters. <laughs> Teleprompted circumstance. They had teleprompters not work, and they and they constantly. Their director is constantly missing cuts to cameras. It's true. Watch the show. <laughs> Same thing with BBC News America and BBC World News. They. I, I, they always, they always, 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 there's always a mistake at least once an episode. And you know, and you know why those shows work? Because they are on PBS. There's no money. All they have to do is tell the truth and entertain, not entertain, and inform. They don't have to entertain. And that's the problem with cable news, especially C- especially Fox News. But following that, MSNBC News, and then CNN, <laughs> they, they're, they're there because they think they have to entertain. They, you do not. You can have, I would rather watch three hours of just straight news. Uh, the Ukraine, there was a dam break in the Ukraine. There was, uh, there was a, there's a, 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 a and refugees being shipped from uh, Florida to New York town to Texas to Arizona. There's uh, migrants rather, not refugees. Uh, there's, there's, uh, you know, civil unrest and Atlanta because there was there the there's a police training operation that was built. I'd rather have all of that just told to me straight than flashing chirons and and spinning uh, logos and sensationalistic this cause this one's aimed at Fox News but sensationalistic headlines. It just doesn't work like that. All right, anyway, I've talked way too much about this. Listen, if you like what you heard here, again, this is supposed to be a job podcast, a business podcast, and I quite I just shit on the only company that would hire me. Uh, then you can, uh, and yeah, I said the S word. This is a clean show, but I don't care right now. You can you can, all, hey, can hey, head on over. Cpluscomedy.com, where we have other podcasts, including the premier podcast, The Constitutionals, which is the entertainment business news, po- news podcast, which is what this show is. Turned into for an episode. 
And uh, sometimes there's comedian interviews as well as uh, Late Night Lately, the Late Late Night Show show, which is on hiatus because of the writer's strike. You can also watch video versions of those shows on YouTube.com slash C plus comedy, where you can also watch our premiere show News Time, which is like the daily show, except way less funny. You can uh, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok and Facebook at C plus comedy. Follow me on those platforms at Chad Black White. And uh, listen, if you if you like watching these new shows, make things make your voice heard. And if you work somewhere where, where I can where I can work, hire me, baby. All right, my portfolio chatsywhite.com. I'll see you later. Bye.